Recently, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works traveled to Montana to promote the America's Great Outdoors Initiative. Accompanying Secretary Joellen Darcy on the trip were representatives of the Omaha District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Secretary Darcy highlighted a private federal partnership that works to understand the impacts of man on the Yellowstone River and how to balance the interests on the river while maintaining a healthy ecology. We've got a partnership with the Corps um, and many um, organizations around the country, but this one, I think, in, in Montana is a pretty unique one. Um, the, the collaboration that's gone on in putting this Yellowstone um, River study together is, is like no other, and I think Colonel Rock mentioned that, but, you know, I've, I've been to a lot of places around the country with a lot of different river groups and stuff, and, and I think what's happening here in Montana is sort of a, a poster child for the way, you know, we can make it work. The initial event took place at Pompey's Pillar, a Bureau of Land Management site some 25 miles east of Billings, Montana. That site holds a particular cultural link to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. On this massive rock outcropping, William Clark of the Corps of Discovery and one half of the Lewis and Clark Expedition inscribed his initials and the date of his passage, July 25th, 1806. It is the only lasting physical evidence of this great expedition. And this, it's not just a signature. There's very few places in the country where you can see the complete history of our country in one spot. And that's really the neat thing about uh, Pompey's Pillar National Monument. You've got pictographs here from the Native American cultures. You've got signatures on here in the 70s from local high schools. And everything in between on this rock. Begun in 2010, the America's Great Outdoors Initiative celebrates this country's long-standing history of outdoor recreation and conservation. Those two initiatives go hand in hand. More exposure to the outdoors through recreation leads to a greater appreciation of this natural resource and a desire to preserve it for future generations. President Obama um, announced his Great American Outdoors Initiative and what he wanted to do with it was to reconnect Americans and especially our young kids um, with America's great outdoors. We're blessed with a country of uh, riches and I, he wanted to ensure that those riches were appreciated by everyone and that we all took advantage of what a great um, outdoor experience we can have in this country. By doing that, also get and reinstill the conservation ethic that I think all of us uh, would like to be able to pass on in, to, in order to be good stewards for the land and for the environment that we have. The Yellowstone River is a key tributary of the Missouri and stretches for more than 650 miles. It is the largest undammed river in the continental United States. Corps of Engineers is as good a partner as you could ever deal with, and we've worked with them for 12 years developing this study. They go to bat for us in Washington, get the funding, get everything lined up, and then supply the expertise that we can work with. But it's guided by the local people. One person from each conservation district along the river is on the council, and we help direct where we're going to go with that and what we're going to accomplish. The Yellowstone River Conservation District Council formed in 1998 to study the river and ensure that local voices were a part of any decisions made affecting the river. In 2004, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers partnered with the District Council to fund 18 studies along the Yellowstone River. One such study looked at channel migration or how the river erodes and forms new river banks and pathways. I think we'll develop a plan for maintaining the river and improving the health. I would say our job is to preserve the health that we have and incrementally enhance it over a period of time. The partnership has many benefits for both the Corps and the Yellowstone River Conservation District Council. Well, I, I don't believe the federal government can come in and, and do that, make an effort like this on our own. Uh, certainly, the way we do business now, we need a cost share sponsor. But, you know, we bring some of the resources, but we could not, unless there is kind of a groundswell from within the community and they feel it's important, we'll, we'll never be able to, to be successful in preserving these resources. You too can participate in the America's Great Outdoors Initiative in many ways. First and foremost, you can take advantage of the beautiful parks, rivers, and lakes that dot our country's landscape. Many of them are a short drive from urban areas, whether it's fishing, a picnic in the park, mountain biking, or a ride down the river in a kayak or canoe. The possibilities are endless. As, as a child, my dad used to take us up uh, camping all the time in, in Corps of Engineers campgrounds because they were more natural and they didn't have the, the commercialism. So I know right, right back to my very roots how important that was to my family. 
and I think a lot of people have lost their connection back back to the nature and you know what what a great country and great opportunities we have all around and you know I've lived in Europe I've lived in Asia and I've, I've been places where people don't have access to this and we just need every now and then to remind people what a great country we have and how to get reconnected with the landscape. Beyond recreation, you can also get involved in local efforts to conserve our outdoors. For more information on how to become involved or to find places to enjoy America's great outdoors, visit the following sites.